this test meeting on February 21st. But today's topic is uh, we've reconvened the group to talk about creating a new integrity level to cover the, to mitigate property override and return override. I'm going to turn over to, I think Matthew has the most recent batch of material. Yes, correct. Uh, that would be on me. Um, okay, so last time we discussed, uh, we arrived at uh, we arrived at the, the temporary agreement that um, stabilize would um, so stabilize would uh, would be a new explicit integrity level uh, that would include two mitigations, one, uh, two fixes, one for the property override, uh, so that like a set on uh, the, the target uh, through assignment, for example, would end up uh, defining the property on the target and not, uh, and not try to uh, set it on, a, uh, on, on the prototype if the prototype is stabilized. Um, the other one is a fix for the uh, private field stamping on a return override trick. Uh, and so a stabilized object would not be eligible uh, for adding a private field uh, to, a, to it through the, the trick. Um, we had potentially discussed of having Harden. So hard, and then Harden would be layered on top of stabilize. Uh, so that Harden would be uh, the same, like today Harden is defined as having uh, the object and all its transitive properties and prototypes being frozen. Instead of being frozen, it would be stabilized. Um, so uh, what we hadn't fully decided, we, we thought we could have uh, Harden as an emergent integrity level instead of being an explicit integrity level. Um, but we hadn't fully settled that question. Uh, Mark and I discussed and basically, oh, and last time I had presented a way to do a uh, explicit integrity level for Harden, uh, but uh, the complication is making that uh, since Harden is, uh, applies to a set of objects, um there and as soon as you introduce proxies you need to leave them an opportunity to uh refuse hardening and also uh, atomically uh let them know that harden has, has actually happened on the on the set of objects so i had presented an approach uh based on a context and callbacks uh on how that could work for an explicit integrity level uh mark was not convinced uh, by the complexity, and uh, and we looked into how an emergent uh, hardened integrity level uh, would work. We had identified that for that, uh, basically, we need a third intervention uh, for stabilize, uh, and that is to make a proxy entirely inert in, uh, after stabilization. What that means is that uh, effectively, you cannot have any of the traps of the proxy uh, execute when uh, on the proxy object anymore once the uh, the proxy is stabilized. Really, what we only need is any of the traps related to properties, so that uh, basically the engine looking at the proxy object, uh, whether uh, it is transitively uh, stabilized or not. Uh, does not trip up, and so that can be done transparently without the proxy knowing. Um, and but for simplicity of, for conceptual simplicity, it's easier to say the handler is basically discarded and ignored uh, once the proxy is uh, stabilized. I see a hand raised from Jess. Uh, can can. Um... You probably covered it incidentally. Uh, can you define stabilize again for me? Yes. Uh, stabilize is an explicit freeze. So it's freezing the object and then marking uh, as a flag that the uh, object is frozen so that you don't need to go and verify. Uh, you don't need to go and verify that the 
object is non-extensible and that all of its properties it, it iterate over all its properties and verify that each of these properties are non-configurable and non-writable. Uh, so it's, it's basically a sort of cached uh, frozen state, uh, an explicit frozen state. Uh, but it's more than that. It's but it's more because we attach behavior to it. We yeah. we attach creepers uh, to that to that state. Yeah, the the this is why I I, I always resist the the caching yeah. explanation because yeah. uh, a cache is supposed to only be uh, is not supposed to have an observable effect. It's only supposed to be a speed up. So freeze is an emergent integrity level. It's simply. Um, you know, uh, whereas non-extensible is an explicit integrity level. Um, the, uh, uh, there's nothing about freeze that needs to be st semantic state. It's always just something that can be computed from other semantic state, whereas non-extensibility is explicit semantic state. Uh, and um, the, uh, so stabilize like non-extensibility would be explicit semantic state. And an object can only carry that state if uh, another of uh, a number of other invariants hold, uh, which is all of the invariants that we associate with freezing. Uh, but in addition, because it's an explicit integrity level, uh, you have to explicitly stabilize in order for the object to be stabilized. Objects that simply happen to be frozen, but were not explicitly stabilized, are not stable. They are only frozen. And the reason why we make it an explicit integrity level is because we want to attach other semantics to it that would be inappropriate to attach to an emergent integrity level. Um, uh, I have not heard the, the, the emergent phrasing uh, before, uh, it. okay. Uh, is that is it the case that I could take a series of other explicit actions that results in the the emergent property of freezing coming to apply to an object? Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you so, so I may never call freeze on an object, but because of a series of other actions, the object yes. has come to be frozen. That's right. If you have an object that is non-extensible and all but one of its properties are non-configurable, non-writable, and um, then you make a, the final property that was, let's say, writable, you make it non-writable just by doing a defined property, and then you turn around and you say, is frozen? The answer will be yes, it's frozen, even though you never called freeze on it. So. Uh, in that sense, it's freeze is not um, uh, semantic state in that an implementation could always implement freeze, I'm sorry, always implement is frozen by always just explicitly checking uh, all of the invariants that imply being frozen. Uh, if the, um, but because it, because uh, uh, being frozen is a one-way trip because once frozen, you're always frozen. Uh, uh, implementations uh, can make good use of caching because for an emergent one called using the cache terminology is fine. You can have a bit in the object that says is frozen at the implementation level. That's just a cache. Uh, and that's nice because since it's a one-way trip, you don't have to worry about cache invalidation. Only if the object can ob observe uh, what the uh, is frozen check actually does. So if the object is exotic, is, is an exotic proxy object, you cannot cache. And that is, uh, that is, that is one reason here where, uh, so for stabilize, we introduced the notion that the stabilize uh, integri explicit integrity level would be cached. So once the target is stabilized, the proxy trap is uh, not cache. Sorry, the <laughs> is explicit. So once the um, target is marked as uh, as stable, as stable, the proxy trap for is stabilized is no longer triggered. What we're actually 
proposing now is that none of the traps uh, ever trigger on the proxy once uh, once the object is stable. Yeah, and I want I want to talk that through quite explicitly, especially with Tom here, um, because this is sort of a, a radical stance, and I I want to check that it actually upholds all of the proxy properties that enable us to do practically transparent membranes. So the, um, the reasoning is that in general, we need to do the proxy traps because of the distinction between the shadow target and the real target. What was our terminology? We came up with better terminology for those things. Did we? I think we just kept it at... Uh... <laughs> I don't think we came up with better terminology. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, the uh, in any case, I'll just stick with that terminology for now. Um, the uh, the idea is that uh, for um, uh, something like if if you have an object that's not stable, and you uh, sorry, if you have a target that's not stable, and then you ask of the pro uh, sorry, if you have a, sh a shadow target that's not stable, and you ask the proxy, are you stable? Then the proxy needs, the, the handler needs to trap so that the proxy can take a look at the real target and see, is it stable? And if so, then stabilize the shadow target. So it can then claim the shadow target is stable and have all of the invariant checking upheld. So. The reason why we believe it's consistent to have a state, once the target, the shadow target is stable, is to have that cause the proxy to be inert, meaning none of the handler traps are ever again invoked. The reason we believe that's okay is that at that point, everything that could be stable on the, the shadow target is already stable. And all of those stability properties are a one-way trip. So there's no longer any intervention by the handler that's needed to prepare the shadow target from the real target. All the preparations done, no further preparations possible anyway. So there's no reason to trap. That's true for the own properties. That's not true, as Matthew pointed out to me, for the inherited ones. Um, uh, so what we're proposing to do is that one would be another semantic implication of stabilize, is that if you stabilize the shadow target, at that point, you've given up the ability to further intervene on the inherited traps in order to go to a fully inert proxy and since the proxy is at that point fully inert, we can even we can even explicitly have that transition drop the handler um, uh, uh, in the same sense that revoking a proxy drops both the handler and the shadow target. So you can drop the handler so the handler can be garbage collected. Um, so Tom, does any of that signal a red flag to you, especially the fact that we're doing a semantic intervention mm -hmm. with regard to the um, proxy traps about inherited properties? I know. And, so and even there's some properties that, that means a proxy that is there not for a membrane, but for uh, observability uh, can mm -hmm. no longer observe uh, access. That's, that's the point. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So, so if your goal is not to wrap around but to just intercept, then obviously you will lose that ability. But okay, I understand it would still be opt in. Like the proxy will get asked to stabilize, and they and of course the the question is if you reject, it probably breaks it breaks the overall application, right? Because um, um, so let's say if you have some kind of tracing tracing um, proxy mm -hmm. that just logs and traces all the accesses. Um, 
Yeah, so yes. either you break the, break the application <laughs> or you stop logging. Uh, um, it depends no, on uh, how it depends on how stabilization is triggered. Currently, the uh, the only thing we're proposing is to have a reflect dot stabilize uh, that returns true or false. It doesn't throw. Uh, so it depends on what the behavior is. Yeah. So, but the question is, if if you try to stabilize the proxy and the proxy returns false, so rejects the stabilization, what is the what is the surrounding code to do, right? Yeah. Um, so that's. Uh, so uh, so 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 I think you're you're right that those are the choices and those and the reason why we need those to be the only choices is I think the thing that you that you and I, Tom, underestimated when we were doing a lot of the original proxy work um, uh, is reentrancy attacks. Um, is that um, uh, if, um, you know, I, as a callee who's defensively consistent, who doesn't trust my caller, if my caller gives me something that I then somehow try to validate as being plain data. Uh, once I've validated it as being plain data for some definition of plain data, um, then I should be able to look at it again without giving my attacker, my untrusted caller, the ability to execute during my observation. So the fact that I'm turning control over to my attacker during any observation of an untrusted argument after trying to validate that the untrusted argument looks benign um, gives my attacker too many opportunities to execute while I've got suspended invariance. Okay, I thought the trust model was more if you have, if you really, that that you would have to sort of enforce the VAT boundaries if you're talking to untrusted parties also because of like, um, you can go into infinite loops and all these kind of things. Like if you really want so to defend it, against. So inf yeah. infinite loops are an availability attack. Right. Um, uh, Reentrancy it can be an integrity attack, and what, what we're reason, worried about with integrity is an integrity attack. Mm -hmm. And we always wanted to support um, uh, intra that uh, defensive consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you know, go, um, you know, going back to our our pre proxy work on eventual send and all that, the idea of the eventual send operation was always that by eventually interacting with an untrusted object, even within the same VAT, I can protect myself from reentrancy attacks. Um, the given the, so so in the E context, that was as far as we could go, because E didn't, I'm sorry, E did have a notion of deep frozen. And E deep frozen, if I verify that, then I'm also protected against reentrancy attacks. Uh, in JavaScript with proxies, um, all of the stability that we have now does not give me the equivalent of deep frozen um, because the proxy traps can still cause side effects even on an object mm -hmm. that seems as frozen as it can seem. Mm -hmm. So stabil stability would give me the guarantee that the object really is plain data in the sense that it has no ability to cause side effects. Right. So... I, 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 I can follow that reasoning. There's two things when I looked at the design that I think we should pay attention to. The first one was related to the revocability. And so if I understand correctly, so we have proxies, but we also have added revocable proxies pretty late in the design, right? Revocable proxies are when you, uh, for those of you maybe less familiar, it's where you create a proxy and you get back, not just a proxy object, but also a revoke function when you call the revoke function, you drop the pointer to the target and the handler, and the proxy becomes this sort of dead pointer that will throw on access. 
So if I understood the design correctly, if you stabilize the proxy, then um, it sort of becomes uh, yeah, stabilized to its target and you, you can't even revoke it anymore, right? And so I was wondering if you think about this from a capabilities perspective, like if I'm the creator of a revocable membrane and I get this revoke function, I expect that I can call it to sort of collapse the membrane, right? To make sure that everything is, is garbage collected. But now with this new design, and, and also actually, I don't even need to care about the handler, right? Like whatever the logic of the handler is, if I call the revoke function, I know I will shut down the proxy. But if the handler can now, when somebody asks outside the membrane, asks this proxy object, please stabilize yourself and the handler agrees to that, then the party holding the revoke function all of a sudden has lost the ability. So it's sort of like you're taking away some of the power that they used to have. I wonder if that's something that we should be careful about. So yes. here's, a, here's a practical software engineering assumption that I think is plausible with regard to um, uh, which is that, uh, first of all, um, uh, we would do something weird with regard to the fallback, the default, if there's no explicit trap uh, 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 for stabilize, uh, is that we would have the stabilize operation default to false rather than default to true. We, we need to talk about that because there is, there is weirdness in, in doing that. So uh, yeah, th this is exactly one of the concerns we, we yeah. identified. The default, the default behavior might cause uh, issues for old in membrane implementations that are not aware of stabilized uh, right. that lose. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. So, the, so yeah. that, so that, that, that so was that the was... other the other yeah. concern, but it's separate from revoke. Okay. But, but... That's the other concern, right? Is the backwards okay, well, so, compatibility. So, so, okay, so so yeah. so okay, so so with that on the table, whether we do it or not, with that on the table, uh, the the software engineering assumption is that generally the code that expresses whether you're making a revocable proxy or not, in other words, the call to proxy.revoke is code designed with the handler. So if the code expressing, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, it's obviously not necessarily the case, mm -hmm. but if the, if the handler is coming from one party and the decision about whether to call new proxy versus proxy.revoke is coming from another party, then you've got a potential problem with this design. But if you assume that they're co-designed, then, um, having the handler agree to let the proxy be stabilized is co-designed with the weakening of the revocability of the proxy by, by agreeing to that. And Jazz is shaking his head and has his hand raised. <laughs> So, so my question uh, was, uh, what was the more general case that Tom brought up? And I'm glad that you did because I could not think of a general case. Revocability is just one case, right? If if I if it is the case that calling reflect.stabilize can change the semantics of the code that I of of, of the object that I pass around, that that seems generally problematic. Revocability is not the only issue. Anytime somebody can call reflect on stabilize on an object that I was reliant on the semantics of, that will change the semantics of the object that I have. I think that that is the general problem. Revocability I mean, certainly is a specific example. No? Um, which semantics? Because at the end of the day, we've already accepted in a language that holding a reference to an object can change the semantics of the object because you're allowed to freeze it, you're allowed to prevent extensions. Uh, stabilize is roughly an extension of uh, of, th of that. Uh, it's this feels weird. But that's the design of JavaScript. 
this feels weirdly different from Freeze, right? Freeze says whatever you are reliant on now continues to be the case. The stabilized, from what I understood, the the semantics that I had added are suddenly are suddenly removed. Like if I had a if I had an on before and on after on an object now, my my proxy goes away. So this is different from freeze. Is this not different from freeze? So well, so so in the specific case of of the revocation, it indeed you're taking away you're taking away power, and that so that's that's indeed the issue. I'm not sure if, if it. Well, it, it does generalize, of course, to any kind of interception behavior you would have placed on the proxy. Um, and so in that regard, that's the second issue that we raised, namely, um, it should really be opt in by the proxy, of course. Um, in other words, the handler really needs to be able to control this because otherwise the obvious thing is you can, yeah, any party can just shut down essentially all the proxy logic, which is, which is very bad. Um, so it should be opt in. And, and there, there is the problem like, okay, there is already proxy code out there that doesn't know about this behavior. Therefore, we need to be extremely careful uh, if what the default behavior will be, right? You don't want the default behavior to, um, to be to, to shut down the, the proxy handler. I don't think that's a, that, that's a... So, th so this is where the, the issue yeah. of uh, what the default is in the absence of the handler. Right. If the if the, the what you would normally expect is in the absence of the handler, um, that uh, the operation does what the operation would have done if applied directly to the target. Uh, so, but if you do, but 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 by using your terminology, if we have the default for stabilize be that stabilize succeeds, then it's an opt out system rather than an opt in system. Um, if we have mm -hmm. the def default be that stabilized fails, then you have to apply, then you have to supply a stabilized trap in order for it to succeed. At that point, it's an opt-in system. And at that point, you haven't broken previous membranes with regard to what the previous membranes themselves did with regard to, to the semantics of that, ver of, you know, of what mm -hmm. JavaScript was then. Uh, but you, it does mean that they're not no longer practically transparent with regard to new JavaScript, with regard to JavaScript with the detectable stabilize. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it looks like we're somewhat agreeing it's too dangerous for stabilize to be the default uh, behavior uh, for proxies, to accept stabilization to be default behavior for proxies. I'd like to discuss the, how we can get for it to be an opt-in mechanism, because um, the problem is currently the absence of a trap is defined as uh, falling back onto the reflect method. Uh, I have seen implementations of proxies in the wild that uh, take reflect, spread it, and then uh, add their own, uh, add their own overrides of the reflect behavior. So purely the absence of uh, of a stabilized trap is not the right answer either. Either uh, you can extend that to if you have a simple manually defined stabilized trap that uh, I mean. So may maybe that's what it is. It, it, is it a question of having comparing stabilized to the intrinsic uh, the stabilized yeah. to the intrinsic? It, I mean, then that's weird because if the, someone goes in and patches, uh, you have a shim for reflect the stabilized, then it's not, uh, you know, uh, there's potentially issues there where you, currently, I believe in, in the spec, we never have, oh no, we do. I take that back. We, we do have checks whether uh, some, some property is uh, the same as an expected intrinsic. So, okay, we, we do have a precedent for that in the spec. Hmm. Um, just asking if the target of proxy is itself a proxy. Uh, it it recurses until you bottom out in another proxy. 
Um, oh, oh, okay. Then, then I have a real problem now. Uh, so, so this means that if uh, so, one of the uses of proxies is uh, actually the logging example is a is a less contentious one. I'm going to use the logging example, but I have more serious examples in mind. But let's say I'm doing logging now. That means that I really have. If if the underlying mechanism is using stabilize, you know, if the if the legacy app is using stabilize, I really have once this is introduced, I really have no mechanism to continue to do logging using a proxy object. Is is that correct? No. Yeah, you refuse so, the elimination, but uh, well, I, I, sorry, yeah. say that again, mate. You refuse your proxy would would refuse stabilization. Uh, no, that's not a possibility because that then the the application will break. You you cannot both allow logging and protect from reentrancy attack. Yeah, correct. But the other alternative is to be explicit about your logging and transform uh, the data properties that you're observing into accessor properties. Oh, correct. accesses correct. will stay. Okay, yes, so right. I will yes. lead to monkey press. Yes. Man, that still yes. sucks, right? That still removes a whole bunch of the power of proxies. I, I get. I guess part of my problem, and maybe I need to go and read the thread. I don't understand the the reentrancy attack that the that Mark you're describing. I I, I don't fully grok why the problem arises, and maybe I, that's that's homework for me. The the reentrancy attack is one thing we've been concerned about for proxy for a while. We can probably send you uh, an issue uh, about that. Uh, we have a lot written up. In the case we're discussing here, it's mostly the question of harden and whether the engine can uh, basically traverse the object graph without the proxy trap uh, tripping up, uh, so that it can cache. Uh, and like here, because we're talking about a, a, an emergent harden integrity level, so really this is a cache. Uh, harden uh, states for an object. Uh, and right. this is something uh, uh, Patrick brought up, like the immutable implementation. Currently, Harden is a flag uh, on the object, and they do want to keep it uh, that way because it, it allows them to do a lot of uh, optimizations. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and as with the current flag, as an emergent integrity level, it really is a cache uh, mm -hmm. in that. If the flag isn't there, then you 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 do the manual work to figure out if the graph at that from starting from that root root is hardened, um, which would now be that that transitively everything involved is everything that that involved is stabilized, uh, rather than that everything involved is frozen. Uh, but it, but because of the nature of what you're checking, that's itself a one way trip, and. The harden cache, the you know, the hardening cache is much more significant in terms of savings than the freeze cache, uh, because uh, it's a arbitrarily large graph traversal that you're avoiding the second time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to get back to the point that Jazz raised about the logging. So, so indeed, so the um, accessing data properties, you can turn them into accessors at the cost of losing transparency, right? So that's that's the cost that you pay. And of course, and any kind of functions or methods you can, the, the proxy can install sort of uh, substitute properties on the shadow target that when those functions get invoked, they do the logging before, after, and so on. So, so, so I think for practical purposes, um, you don't lose that much. Um, right. I, I the, think the, the, yeah. the, issue, the issue is avoiding hidden execution is mm -hmm. get, get own property descriptors reveals the accessors. And the thing that we do right now to try to verify that something is plain data includes doing get own property descriptors and verifying yeah. that all of the properties are, are non-writable, non-configurable data properties. Mm -hmm. So you're concerned about even about reentrancy attacks on code that deliberately does reflect like it's using reflective calls, and I mean by that like the at the property descriptor level you're trying to inspect an object, but even okay. at that property descriptor level proxies will trap, right? They because they want to virtualize even at that level, and it's even there that there can be reentrancy. 
And th yeah, that's, that's primarily the thing you want to shut down. Yeah, that's that's exactly the one we're worried about because if you don't yeah. do the re reflective inspection, then you don't have the assurance that you're looking at a yeah. a, a POJO, a plain data object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so so the the, the yeah go, go ahead, ahead just oh so but, but we are losing something right uh, a proxy object allows me to trap un, unknown like. Uh, so given the logging, given the logging example, uh, if I wanted to know whether uh, some piece of JavaScript was accidentally calling an, a, a typo property, this, this is my logging framework. My logging framework helps me find unknown properties that you are accidentally calling. Uh, now I cannot roll out that logging property, that logging functionality anymore. Okay, so let me take you through a Gedanken experiment. Let's say we didn't do any of this. Uh, there's still something that a callee can do to defend themselves against reentrancy if they're willing to pay the expense, which is do a one-time traversal and copy all of the objects and make their own copies of all the objects. And uh, you know whether they go through a, a you know serialize and unserialize, they just do a, a, a walk and copy. But essentially, at the place where they would have done the reflective inspection, they just do a full traverse and copy, and they make new plain data objects. And at that point, they can then take a look at properties on their plain data objects as much as they want, and your logging framework is no longer catching it. So this is, uh, this is essentially allowing the callee to be as protected as they would have been if they made a copy mm -hmm. without having to force them into the overhead of making the yeah. copy. And 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 again, so Jazz, so I, I sympathize with, with your point of view, although I think the example you give, again, proxies already need to be aware of uh, freezing, right? So so you might ask a proxy you know, please freeze yourself. And at that point, you're limiting the proxy to, for instance, it always has to uh, make a certain property be stable, appear stable. And so if it still wants to do something when that property gets accessed, it can still sort of mediate by installing a wrapper a wrapped value, uh, in particular wrapped function values or accessors on the shadow target so that it can still run some logic uh, when those properties effectively get accessed by regular application code. So I think for most, I mean, it's really only sort of like when even at the sort of introspection property descriptor level, you want to keep things virtual that you're losing something, I think. And you go this. So, so this if, uh, 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 Tom, it's been a while now that I did this work, so I, I can't remember, and yeah. you can correct me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, if I remember right, I uh, via a proxy, I could pre if the uh, if the legacy application uh, called freeze, I could say, "Yep, it's frozen," and then the proxy would behave as if the underlying object was frozen, whether or not it was frozen or not. Uh, was 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 that never the case, Matthew? You you're shaking the, your head. Was that the the shadow target has to be frozen in order for the handler to claim that the proxy is frozen? Oh, I yeah. see. Ma yeah, maybe maybe yeah. there was a bug in in the implementation in Chrome when I was working on this then, because that was not the case. That I was able to get all of the work that I needed done, but make the legacy application think that everything happened. Uh, but 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 with the state so okay if that is not the case that is not the case with stabilize that is definitely not going so here's the thing that I would want as long as it is possible for me at the virtualization because the the, the proxy is provided generally by a third party not the legacy application if I can do something cheaply that allows me to let the application pretend to be the way it was but maintain the semantics, then I'm happy. What I'm hearing is that's not going to be the case. And and actually, given your answer, 
it's already not the case because if 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 freeze was more popular my frameworks would be breaking already i am confused about what you call legacy application so i have I, ha I have an existing application that goes ahead and maintains its own semantics uh, a third party comes along and is inserted into the application that does let's say logging on top of the, an existing application that's what i so I have an existing application, and then layered on top is a is a is a logging framework. The logging framework should be able to execute without without the underlying application having to change. There's several cases where problems will arise. Uh, freeze is an example, and the and the logging application uses proxies, so it goes ahead and and modifies objects so that instead of the original object, it has uh, it, it has the proxy object. Now there are several cases where problems will arise where the underlying application will notice that things have changed. One is freeze, and uh, I, I thought that I had a mechanism to get around freeze. Uh, stabilize is going to be another one, but stabilize seems to be, and maybe freeze is already the case. I will not be able to fake it so that the underlying application does not need to become aware that something has changed. But does the application actually care about uh, the fact that properties are data or accessors? I mean, most applications don't care. But, but th that's the problem, right? Like, so most applications, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, I don't know until it breaks. Like the, yeah. the cases that I'm talking about, I was a past, like I, I'm a reverse proxy. Like I, this is a very concrete case, right? I'm a reverse, I'm a, sorry, proxy is a terrible term here because we have two versions of proxy. I am a, I'm a CDN and I'm passing <laughs> this content through and I'm injecting, I'm injecting things in, uh, a logging framework in. Um, and 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 so the application that is being changed is not an application I have necessarily seen before. So one of two things, like ideally, I'm a semantics preserving proxier. And 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 there's two answers that you can give me, both of which will make me sad. Uh, one is, dude, you're already broken right now. You just don't know it because people aren't doing freeze enough, or. Uh, I'm sorry, there's an attack that can be introduced yeah. here that we need to block. So, sorry, just go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I, I think the, 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 because of the, I mean, I, I don't know just how familiar you are with this whole shadow target, real target trick. Uh, it, okay, so I can send you a pointer afterwards, but, but essentially, when when a proxy is being coerced into being frozen, it can still arrange for things to be installed on the on the target object that can enforce some of the semantics that it's willing to enforce. Now, thinking through this, this primarily this works really well with accessors, methods, and so on. Pure data properties, and of course, this is what what we're thinking about, like Pojo type of your data, that is, of course, something that the proxy, the moment it becomes frozen, um, today with, with a frozen proxy, the, the proxy can still trap the access and so it can still log, even though it can't change the data value that is going to be returned. With stabilize, indeed, you would no longer be able to, to log that access, right? So, so indeed, we are giving something up here. I mean, there is a loss of virtu of faithful, transparent virtualization. And so that is a... And uh, so supposing that... Supposing that you have a host that constructs a proxy for the purposes of observing these traps and let's not say log, but actually make meaningful side effects um then passing that to a guest alice and then later passing that object to guest bob potentially 
creates a plant interference ha hazard where the Alice would be able to stabilize that object and prevent Bob from causing the side effects that they previously were able to affect. Mm -hmm. Is it helpful? Yeah, the revocation was one example of that, actually. It, it, that's one of the side effects, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, but revocation, uh, re revocation is a very nice example, uh, by the way, Tom, because it, everybody understands that. The example that I have in mind is closer to what Chris is describing, because my actual framework does make changes. Like, it attenuates what, uh, what an object is able to do. Mm -hmm. so, so revocation, I don't think is the same because the revocation handle is not held by the object. But like having the pro having a handle to the proxy does not give you the ability to revoke it. Having Correct. a handle onto an object would, in our case, give you the ability to stabilize it. Correct. It. So. Um, for my mental model about this, which is still pretty rough, uh, hardening is about self-defense for the values uh, for for the values that you're returning, and we're mostly talking about self-defense for the values you're receiving as arguments. Is that actually as symmetric as it seems? That's a great question. Um, yeah. The original sin is that Harden and all those object mutations uh, are just possible by having a, a reference to the object itself and not to a uh, creator. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the and that was that was um, you know. When we did this, yeah. which was in the ES5 design, uh, we knew it was a hack, and this is ex exactly for exactly this reason, uh, because in um, you know in, in, a, in a in a in a language designed to be an OCAP language, there's the moment at which the object is fully formed, and it, the moment the and and it's not released until it's fully formed. And at the time that it's released, it's already fully def fully defensible. Uh, in JavaScript, because we're starting with a language in which everything was born fully mutable, we needed a step for the creator to say, okay, I'm about to release this to my untrusted clients, so I want to make it defensible now. And what you're pointing out correctly is that the it used to be the case that enough freezing uh well freeze was the thing we created to make the object defensible and with this new semantics freeze is no longer adequate to actually make the object defensible because it doesn't defend against getting stabilized um the harden uh which is what we actually use to make the object defensible because you know the it takes care of all the bookkeeping to make the other subsidiary objects defensible that you need for practical defensibility in real code uh harden with the change in semantics where the each of the steps of the transitive walk is now stabilized rather than a freeze uh all code using harden to express the transition to defensibility would continue to succeed at expressing defensibility because those objects are now defensible against intervention like stabilize. But they're doing it at the price of changing the semantics associated with her to be more than the semantics of having each step be a freezing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I'll ask a question. This is a terrible question, but I, I will ask it because it helps me think through this. Uh, if if the library that loaded monkey patched reflect dot stabilize to do nothing at all, uh, which means reintroduce the vulnerability, uh, 
an application may still, uh, the original application may now break for different reasons because it was reliant on the semantic change and now that semantic change is not occurring. Is, is that correct? That is correct, correct, right? Yes. Okay, so if if I were to monkey patch reflect dot stabilize in order for my logging framework to continue to work, I would need to do a lot more work in the in in that stabilized function. Like whatever work I would need to do is the thing that we should be. About. So the no, I don't know so how the, to say that. Okay, so there's three additional semantics we're trying to lay on top of stabilize. And the reason why we're excited about Stabilize is none of these three can reasonably be provided at the user level. That's a problem. Yeah. Uh, and the three things are protection from the override mistake, which you can awkwardly provide at the user level by uh, using by turning the, the, the data property into an accessor with that, the pattern that we're using. And it's all, you know, it's all visible and unpleasant. Uh, but, but, but practically we're you know we're doing that today for the override mistake. There's the return override stamping of private properties for which it's without doing a source to source rewrite, it seems pretty clear that there's no way to, to handle that at the user level. And then there is uh, the inertness of proxies uh, that's specific to proxies. Um, uh, and I should, uh, and I think there's also no way to do that at the user level uh, without monkey patching proxy itself. But you know, mm -hmm. if you allow oh, you yourself have, to monkey patch, you monkey have, monkey oh, patch yeah. you have to replace proxy. Yeah, you have to yeah. replace proxy. Yeah. Um, but if you replace proxy, if you virtualize the proxy constructor itself, uh, then uh, you can probably protect against the reentrancy attack. Um, uh, and I should I want to mention one more thing with regard to the, the the inert intervention is part of how we got there was uh, thinking through the implications of the records and tuples proposal, which was trying to introduce uh, composite primitive data um, and then trying to figure out well what is what happens with composite of primitive data across proxies. And the answer has to be the same thing that happens with strings across proxies, which is you just pass them through. You can't virtualize them. And because you can't virtualize them, they're plain data and they provide no reentrancy dangers. But it also means that if we take something you were doing with a frozen object and do it in instead with a record or tuple, you also have lost your ability to do logging or anything like that. Once again, because it's plain data, you know, it's primitive data, like a string is, rather than being an object. Well, I'm afraid that this is the time. We're at time. <laughs> time to call it a wrap. I, we are obviously not done with this conversation. Well, you can expect another email. Um, I'm reserving next week for other topics, uh, since we have some queued up. Um, and... Until then. Okay. Okay. And um, for all those who might be expecting me to other meetings today, I'm out for the rest of the day. Uh, Tom, send me.